is you. So whether you know it or not, each of you has something called the influence network. It's basically a group of, it's basically the people you interact with on a daily basis. So it could be your AP side bros, it could be your roommate, it could be your school classmates, etc. So how does social media impact that influence network? Well, let's take Twitter for example. Twitter is a really basic concept. In 140 characters or less, you basically say what you're doing at the current moment. So what's really great about it is it helps connect people in real time, despite distance. So I could go update my grandparents in India if they use Twitter about what I'm, like, I'm giving a talk right now, except, for example. So how does it impact your influence network? So in 2007, um, when the San Diego fires were going on, the LA Times, the LA Fire Department, and the Red Cross all used Twitter as a means to give information about like, the current situation to individuals. And so I guess the general idea is that um, social media can be used to expand your influence network. So as your influence network expands, you create interactions with multiple people, and these multi-way interactions are basically the key point of, there's supposed to be more people around there, is basically the key point of what creates groups and organizations. So what's the big hype? What's making everyone's head spin about social media? Well, to begin with, it's the speed in which things are being organized. So let's say that Wikipedia was to be recreated by a team or an organization. We would still be on volume three of Wikipedia. However, with individual contributions, what's really great is we know just about everything about anything because everyone can submit what they know. Um, so, you know, this has never really happened in the past. In the past, let's say you wanted to organize a group of a million people. It would take maybe a few years, like at the least maybe a few months. But, you know, you can create a Facebook group and attract a million people in just a few weeks. So I think that's pretty great idea. So what's another thing about social media that is like really amazing? Making weak ties strong. So I don't know how many of you attended Market Talks, um, where Alyssa talked about you know, revolutions, or if you read the news, but in Egypt, there was a revolution that took place, and there were so many protests that were held, and some of these protests were crazy. Millions of people um, protested in Tahrir Square in Egypt um, regarding the Egypt revolution, and they were able to organize this revolution in a matter of weeks. Um, so you saw people in the Muslim Brotherhood standing shoulder to shoulder with people who were these 28-year-old Western-educated technology hipsters. So just to be able to see the idea of having people with relatively nothing in common except a common political belief and access to technology come together is pretty amazing. Um, so here's something from the protest. That was a cool sign. Um, and these, this is Tech Air Square during the protest. Just can you imagine all those people out there at once um, through a Facebook group that was created? Um, another really great social impact that social media has is the idea of collaborative leadership. So social media enables groups and organizations to have relatively leaderless or have few leaders in a movement. So usually you think of someone who, um, I guess, moves, like creates a revolution to be like this charismatic, like social economic leader who's like very good at making speeches, et cetera. But you know, in, for example, in the Egypt revolution, there was this Google employee in Cairo named um, Wael Gonim. He's like a really cool guy. You should listen to his talks. But basically, he was um, like one of the guys who created and administered Facebook groups, was very big political activist. And um, some people tried to dub him as the leader of the Egyptian revolution. But you know, he denied it. And he replied, no, no, no. I'm not the leader of the Egyptian revolution. The network is the leader in these revolutions. And then when he was asked, so what's next? He replied, I don't know, ask Facebook. So I guess that just gives you an idea of how um, having a leader leaderless organization can really empower individuals, because then I know that by joining a Facebook group or joining any sort of um, social socially connected internet organization, I'm making an impact, big or small, on something that might be going on across the world or just here in America. Um, that's him. He's pretty like intense looking guy. <laughs> okay, so what's the role of technology um, in all of these revolutions? So I'm not trying to say that Facebook is the reason that these revolutions happen. There's obviously like like economic problems, um, like cost of food, etc. There's like all these different problems that happen. 
but technology definitely enables people to take action. Um, a lot of people like to say, um, like engage in that debate where they say, oh, is technology good or is technology bad? I like to believe that technology is value neutral, and rather, it takes on the values of its users. So um, Hillary Clinton really likes to compare technology to a bunch of different things. She says, technology is like nuclear power. It can be used to heat homes or to destroy cities. She says that um, technology is like steel. It can be used to build bridges or to make machetes. So I think that definitely embodies like the value of technology. Um, for example, after the Haiti disasters, just like a few days later, young diplomats in the government were able to take technology and they created a, um, a campaign where you can send a text message and donate $10 to Haiti Relief. They were able to donate, um, donate $3 million, which is a crazy amount for just such a short period of time. But on the other hand, like right now in South Beirut, there's these young boys who are sitting in internet cafes playing video games. What's the catch? So Hezbollah has altered these video games so that instead of shooting zombies, they're shooting Israeli soldiers. So, you know, that really gives you a good contrast. And um, so, I guess the message I want to say is be the change you want to see in the world. You hear that a lot. And I have a confession. So, I'm a 19 year old, fairly well educated, politically opinionated individual, but I never registered to vote. And I know, like, a lot of you sometimes might feel, oh, well, I'm just a student, or I have other priorities right now, or I can do this when I get older. I'm just an individual, I can't make a difference. Well, I think that social media really empowers each of us as individuals to make a bigger impact than ever before. So my new message to you is tweet the change you want to see in this world. Yes.